Well, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to make a little project today. We're going to make a, a little, it's going to be kind of like a little mini lampshade. And what we're going to do with that is that I found this uh, little set right here. It's a solar light here on the top right here. And it has these little hummingbirds hanging down there. You all change colors. Anyway, the solar panel itself is one inch thick by five inches across. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a, a, a hexagon uh, like shit lampshade to go over that and this will be up inside of it So uh, should be a fun project So I hope you guys will follow along and I'll show you how we're going to draw that up So first of all, we need to know hexagon has six sides. We need to know how uh, To big to make these um, these each one of these panels. So we're going to need six of them so uh, Got out the drawing board here. If you watch some of my other drawings, you notice I use a I need to make a circle I use a a ruler here that I've made with a bunch of holes drilled in it all along the, the, the ruler. This pretty much shows me where uh, uh, the marks are as far as inches go. And I have a drawing board here or just a little board. And on the back side of it here, I've pushed, I've drilled a little hole here. It's a sixteenth of an inch hole right here. And I'm just going to take a, one of my push pins and push in here like that. I'm going to bring it over here and that go that gives me my point for my pivot point just going to take my little blue t square right here and i'm going to just take and draw say center line here make sure we got this in the camera area here and the way this works now you have a pivot point right here Better get it on the right end, though. I was. All right. You take your you take your push pin and you put it in this pivot point right here, and you set it into the hole here. I have a little socket wrench here. It's five sixteenths socket. It goes over those pins. I just push it down. So we need a five inch circle. So two and a half is is, is the center of that. So we're going to just take our pencil. Here's our two inch mark, two and a quarter, two and a half. And we're just going to set this in here. We're just going to make it go around just like that. Okay, so if, if you don't have a ruler like this or you don't want to do something like this, I've just do it. I did this because I was making a, a lot of projects with real big circles. They were out to uh, 24 inches in diameter. And uh, uh, of course, I couldn't get a compass that big. But if you're just doing one or two of these uh, projects, you can get a real inexpensive, I think you can even find them at the dollar store, a little compass like this. And uh, you can just take and draw the same circle with that. Just measure from tip to your tip of your pencil at uh, two and a half inches and go ahead and draw it there. Okay, so we have the circle. This is where our solar panel is going to go. So now I'm going to take my T-square again here. And I'm going to come up here within about just about an eighth of an inch right here. An eighth of an inch between where this, where it's going to go. And I'm going to draw a baseline right here. Just like that. Then from there, I'm going to take a 30-60 triangle. I'm going to use the 60 degree side, which is this side right here. And I'm going to set it in here. And I'm going to bring it right up. To just about an eighth of an inch from the edge right here. That'll work right there. It goes to there. I'm going to come over and do the exact same size here. You really don't need to measure this. You can kind of just go ahead and eyeball it. Make sure your T square is up tight and your triangle is good. Like that. This right here will tell us from here to here how big how big our panels would need to be so that we can get this five inch solar panel in here. So let's take our ruler and we'll measure that. Okay, it says we're gonna need to make these panels three inches 
wide. Okay, you can finish this on out if you wanted to. You just take your take your T square, turn your turn your uh, triangle around, roll it, roll it, run it up, put it back in here. Take and run it up. Come up to the top here. Run it across the top. So that's your six sides here. So uh, three of the three of these uh, will have a hanger on. We'll put it, we'll put a hanger on this one. We'll put a hanger on this one. We'll put a hanger on this one. And then something we need something to hold this in there. So we're going to mount what they call a cleat. I think we'll put it on these. It's just going to be a piece of H came laid on its edge like this. Oops, I'm sorry. So those will stick out into the opening of this of this little lampshade we're going to make. And those will hold the solar light in there. So this may be a little confusing right now, but when we get ready to make it, uh, they'll they'll make more sense to it. They act really act, basically ask act like a little shelf for us. So anyway, uh, we'll be back in a minute. We'll get another piece of paper out, and uh, we'll draw how these panels are going to look. We're gonna we're going to take and do this with them. Uh, we're going to have a, a three inch header here, and then I think I'm gonna, I'm going to make this bottom part four inches, so they'll have a little bit of an angle to them like this. Across the top here will be one inch. And then down the sides here, I'm going to run a piece of iridescent granite. They're going to be a half an inch here at the top. And whatever they come out here, I don't know, probably maybe it'll be maybe one inch by the time they get down to the end. And then in here, we're just going to take random colors and we're going to fill this all in. Uh, kind of like a, a Frank Lloyd Wright type style. So should be an interesting project. So we'll be back in a minute. We'll get our uh, we'll get our, another sheet of paper and we'll draw that up real quick and we'll make a quick pattern so we'll know how to cut these angles right here. So we'll be back. All right, well, we're back. We got a clean sheet of paper here now. So we're going to make, how are these panels going to look? We're going to need six of them. So we're just going to take our, uh, here again, we'll take our little T-square here and we'll make us a baseline right here and we know we'll make it upline also so we've got a, got a, something to work with here we know that this is going to be three inches so we're going to go one and a half on each side so this will be three here three here and now i'm going to take in uh, i think i'll make this to like four and a half inches long and i'm just kind of eyeballing these links Let's make it four and three quarter here. So I'm going to take and draw a line up here at four and three quarter. Like that. And since we're going to make this have a flare out to it here, and I says, this is three, I'm going to make this four. So we'll come out here to two inches. So it'll be four inches right here. So that means that this right here will be where our, our sides are going to end. So to, to do this now, we're just going to take our ruler here. And we're going to go from that point to that point right there. Pull that up there. I'm going to do the same thing here. That point. To this point up like that so it has a little bit of a flare uh, that's that's not that's not very much of a flare so maybe we'll let's let's take and move this on out uh, let's move this on out a quarter of an inch here that's the nice thing about designing your own little projects. You can do whatever you want to with them here. Let's, so we're going to move this out to four and a quarter or four, uh, four and a half here. After you play with these things for a little while, you get an idea for what you're kind of looking for uh, design wise. Uh, 
Okay, I like that better. So out here on the outside, this is where we're going to go out here. So this is going to be four and one half inch outside here. This one in here is going to be three inches. So that'll give you an idea. And now across the top here, we're going to run our header. So we're going to just use our standard little ruler here it's so it's one inches wide this one right here i'm just going to lay it in here this is kind of cheating but i'm just going to lay it in here like this pull this across and now down here i want this to be it's going to be a half an inch wide here to start with on each side so let's go here with our half an inch Uh, yeah, half an inch is good. And we'll bring our ruler up here. Okay, let me go offline real quick here. I'll get an eraser and I'll move this, remove this line out of here so it doesn't get too confusing. So I'll be right back. All right, we're back. We took it and moved those lines out of there so it doesn't, we, doesn't, we don't uh, confuse everybody with those other lines in there. Uh, the reason I moved that out a little bit, I didn't quite like that. It didn't have much of a flare to it here. So this is going to create that, that lamp shade effect by having this flared out here. So this right here at the top, this is one inch. This one here is going to be, right here is going to be a half an inch from here to here. And let's see what it measures down here. It's going to be an inch and about an inch and an eighth. One and one eighth inch. So one and one eighth inch. One half inch. So I'll go ahead and uh, uh, get this set up. We're going, to, we're going to make a little pattern for these guys and this guy here because it has an angle on it. It's not a straight cut. So uh, let me get that set up real quick and we'll come right back and we'll show you how we're going to make the pattern and then we'll get ready to make these panels. It won't take very long. All right, so we're back. We got our, our uh, stuff to make our pattern. We have a piece of carbon paper here. I'm just going to make that pattern with a manila envelope or a folder. So uh, what we're going to do is just take this. I took and hinge this up at the top and just going to lift it up here. I'm going to set this in here like this. Going to tape and tape these down. Just like that. Put my carbon paper in here. All right, so we're back here. We had to cut it off real short here. My wife came home and uh, my shop is out, out, actually out in the garage. And so when she came in, the door was making all kinds of noise. So I kind of shut it off here. So anyway, we've made our sandwich here. We've got our Manila folded down underneath here and our carbon paper. So now what we're going to do, we're just going to trace over the top of this. So we just take our, our uh, T-square here. And I'm just going to push this down here. Go right across here. I'll do these two right here real quick. So this will give us our pattern for this. So this area in here is where we're going to fill it up with the, with the colored glass. So we'll take our ruler outside here and we'll just set it in here like this. And we'll mark that going up and down. Come over here and do the same thing here. I 
All right. So there's our pattern. We'll just take this back and I'll show it to you real quick. So we'll take and cut that up and then we'll get ready to uh, uh, cut some glass and we'll make these up. So pull this back. Let us unhinge this. Here's our pattern right here. Uh, one other thing we might do real quick here. Let's put this back in here real quick. Uh, we might want to mark these. And uh, so this one here, we'll make the, we'll make this number number one. This will be number two. This will be number three. And the reason we're going to mark those is because if you cut them all doing this one side, um, then they, they won't fit over here, even though these are going to be the same size. So you want to be able to be, make a, a left hand and a right hand one. And uh, we're going to build we're going to build this starting at the bottom and go up. So we could we could call this uh, number two. We could make it left, and number uh, three we'll make right, just so you don't get confused on that. So, and we're going to put this on. Uh, we're going to put this on an iridescent granite, it's right? This one right here. It's a ripple glass, has a smooth side here. So in order to cut that, you're going to turn your patterns upside down. And uh, so that'll help us so we don't get them uh, messed up. And across the header here, I have this uh, kind of a grayish blue uh, right here. Uh, we're going to just go ahead and we'll use that for the header. So uh, we'll be uh, kind of a neutral color on that. So. We'll be back in a minute and we'll get ready. We'll get the pattern all cut up. We'll get this one mounted on the board. I'll take and darken these lines in with a Sharpie, just a fine tip pen. That'll give us our lead lines and then we'll go ahead and we'll make our form for it. So we'll be back and do that in just a second. All right, well, we're back. We got our uh, pattern all cut up here now. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to break this as far as the glass goes. I'm going to cut this as one piece. But in here, I'll show you what we're going to do. We're going to put a a piece of the crown from our uh, H came across here. I'll show you. We've done that on some other projects because I like to give that a little bit of stiffer because our hanger is going to be right here in the corner. So anyway, so that's that's our pieces for our for our glass. Uh, the glass we're using this this gray bluish gray. I've taken I've marked a grain on it. I like to do that. So so all all these pieces that are running up and down will go the same direction. And I did that on the granite glass also. So, so when we put these in here, we won't have one turned sideways. Uh, I said this before, but if you don't do that, sometimes what happens, you'll put one in here going up and down, and then accidentally you'll cut one going this way. You won't notice it until it's all done. And when you put it up, you'll go like, that's going the wrong way. So you got to create a problem. So here again, if you watch some of my other videos, you notice I, I like to use a lot of uh, different props and forms and so forth. So here's our little form wood right here. Here again, these are just made out of three quarter inch pine. Uh, they put on a table saw with the gate set at a quarter inch and just take and rip them through there. Uh, so they make a nice uh, way to do this. If you don't have a table saw or something like that, uh, a thing that works really well is uh, uh, pick up some yardsticks, some wooden yardsticks at the hardware store, uh, a couple of those, and just cut them into pieces that, uh, that work for you. So remember, our hanger is going to be right in here. It's going to be right here. We're going to put that on three of them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, let me put another ruler in here. We're going to put a ruler in here, and we're going to take for our header here, and we're going to move this in here like this. But we're going to leave a gap here so that that hanger can come through there. We're just using our little wire brads here again. And we'll take and we'll tack that down. So we get it tacked down good so it doesn't move on us. Now since this angle right here doesn't uh, represent anything as far as a, a like a 60 degree, it just happens to be where we, where we decided because this is three inches, this is four and a half, so this doesn't really have a, a angle that'll work on a triangle. So, I, so those we're physically going to have to just take and do this. We're going to leave a little gap there for our hanger to come through. But we're just going to line them up on the outside of the lead line right there. And we'll take and put that here again. Tack it down. Put one more down here at the end.
And you can tell from the looks of these, these have been used over and over and over and over. Uh, they last a long, long time. So, uh, somebody asked me, how do I get these off of here? I use it like a three inch putty knife. So, uh, just a big putty knife like this. And I just come underneath them and pop them up. And then I just take my brads out. I use those over and over also. So that's how I get those off of there. So we've had some really nice comments and some really good questions about some of these projects. So I appreciate you doing that. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. Okay, so we'll set that one in there like that. Make sure it's right against the outside of the lead line. Get it lined up. There you go. Need a couple more here real quick. All right. Get that down. So that's the next phase of our project. But before I stop right here, I'm going to take this out of here. I'm going to take our uh, carpenter square here. I'm going to take and put it against uh, the back of my workbench, which is 90 degrees to our project here. And I'm going to take a piece of the form wood here, and I'm going to set it in here like this. So this will create a straight edge for me, and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. This doesn't have to be nailed down really super tight because it has no pressure on it. Just want to make sure it's tight up against our square. Just like that. And what we're going to do with that, as we start to fill these areas in here, we want them to all be straight. We don't want them going all over different directions. So uh, now we can take our little blue T-square and we can set it in here and we can move it up and down to make sure they're straight. And then when we get down to the bottom and we're all done with this, I want this to be perfectly straight across the bottom. So we'll have a nice straight edge here to work with as far as getting it all of them exactly the same. If you don't get all of them exactly the same, you'll have this situation where they're moving. Some of them will be higher and some will be lower than others. It doesn't look quite as nice. So uh, uh, that, uh, that'll, that'll work that way. If, uh, if you're concerned about maybe you think you can't make them all exactly the same, you can always take this and kick this on, a, on an angle here and uh, make it kind of have a little bit of a deckel edge. So make them all this way and it'll kind of make everything drop in and go back out, drop in and go back out. So that's another way to get around that. If, you, if you're if you concerned at making them all exactly the same so they line up, uh, may be a problem. But, uh, you know, if you're off a little bit, it's, uh, nobody's going to notice it. So anyway, uh, we'll come back here. We're going to cut some uh, R, um, RU70 uh, U came to go around the perimeter here. Right here, we're going to put our hanger. And uh, if you followed my videos, you'll know that we uh, make those hangers out of a 332nd cotter pin. They're an inch and a half long. And uh, they'll go inside the came here, so they'll be hidden, so you won't see them. All you'll see will be the, the little hanger sticking out here. So uh, if you like this cotter pin idea, there's a whole video on my channel showing uh, how to use it for several different applications. So uh, you can take a look at that also. So we'll be back in a minute. We're going to take and cut some up, uh, cut some uh, uh, you came up and we'll go ahead and stick it in there and then we'll show you what we're going to do. All right, we're back. So it's time for us to cut some came to go in here. U70. So that's uh, the name of it. Has the flat back on it, which I like. It makes it easier to solder when you're putting two corners together. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just stick it in here. I'm going to let it run long right here by about a half an inch. So I'm just going to measure it with my finger here. Cut it with my dikes here so that I have the smooth side in. That one's going to go right there. And now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to just take this, cut off the pointed area here. I'm going to cut another one just by holding it together here like this. So now we've got one for each side. We're eventually going to need 12 of these. I'm going to show you a little cutter that I have 
that uh, I bought about 25 years ago. I don't even know if they're still available anymore. But it's handy when you're making a whole bunch of things that are exactly alike. So we've got that in there. So now we need to put one across the header here. So we're going to here, we're going to take this again. Here again, we're going to use the flat side of our cutters. We're going to set it in here and we're going to set it right here. Like that. And we're going to mark this right here. And we're just going to take our cutter and we're going to cut it right on the line. Then for these, we're going to take this and we're going to cut it on kind of almost a 45 degree angle here. We're going to cut it on a 45 here. And this edge right here is where we're going to put our hanger. We're going to take it and we're going to cut a notch in it right here. This will be for our hanger to come through. Just like that. So this one here, we're going to cut a 45 on it again. And this one here, we'll do the same thing. We'll cut a 45 on it. Get all these little pieces out of the way. This one here will come down here like this. This one's going to go in here like this. These two will meet right here, which makes a nice joint right here. And this one here will come down. And we'll come in there just like that. So that'll make us a nice 45 degree joint. Our cotter pin hanger is going to go in here. So if you watch my other videos, you'll notice I use a, a 3 32nd cotter pin to make our hanger. I'll show you how we're going to do that real quick. Take a pair of long nose pliers. Here's our cotter pin. It's a steel zinc plated, 3 32nds in diameter, inch and a half long. Uh, you could get away with an inch if you can't find these anywhere. These particular cotter pins are purchased on Amazon, so they've got all kinds of uh, cotter pins, so you can go crazy. Whatever you do, though, don't buy stainless steel because you'll have a heck of a time trying to bend them. So just put your long nose pliers in your loop. Take and switch your hand. And I have a piece of tubing here. It has a 3 32nd hole across the middle of it. I slide it under the longest leg first. And I'm going to bring it out here about like that. Then I'm going to turn this around and put it in here. And I'm going to come out kind of like that. And where that's going to go, it's going to go in here. And as you can see right here, see where this is bending over here? I've gone way too far. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take and bring this back. And now I brought it back just a little bit too far, so we're going to push it forward again. And that's what we're looking for right here. So that'll create our hanger right here. And this piece here, this down piece that we have the uh, mark on it here, we're going to take and we're going to uh, we're going to take and put a notch in it also to help give us room for our hanger. I mean, for our hanger. Just like that. Now these legs on here don't need to be that long. So what I'm going to do, my long nose pliers have what they call a side cutter on them here. And I'm just going to push this through until the edge of the cotter pin comes through here. And what happens there, that's about a quarter of an inch I'm going to take off. So I'm going to take and clip that off. Cut those back like that. We'll need three of these. So this goes in here like this. This goes in here like that. Here again, our notch. This is going to come in just like that. And this one here is going to go right here. That gives us a start for our project. I'm going to reach over here and get some push pins. I'm going to come up here on the edge here, sit these in here right like that. And now we're ready to cut our header glass right here. So uh, I'll go offline. I'll get that set up real quick. It's going to be this piece right here. This is our pattern piece. It's going to go in here like this to create our header piece. So we'll cut that. But since we put the cotter pin in here, think about it. We've increased this edge right here. So when we cut this piece, 
we'll put it on the grinder and we're going to grind back a notch about like that to go around our cotter pin so this will sit up square it'll sit up straight that's why we put this straight edge on here so when I get it in here I can be sure put my straight edge on here and be sure that it's lined up straight with our are coming across because we don't want it to get all crooked it'll get uh, kind of wonky looking and pretty soon it just gets worse as you go down so uh, let me go offline real quick we'll get set up to do the glass we're going to do this these headers are going to be done in the uh, this blue gray right here this one here uh, looks like we've got a big enough piece here we're going to need this is going to be three and a quarter so that's going to be six and a half so that's not going to be big enough to uh, get two out of here which is unfortunately I kind of wanted to run this grain up and down I might have to switch ideas and run it sideways so well we'll work that out in a minute I, I hate to waste all that glass but we might have to all right so we'll be back in a minute we'll get set up to cut this and uh, I'm probably going to run it this way here so we can get to, we don't have to have a bunch of glass wasted it'll look okay running sideways as long as we make them all run sideways so we'll be back in a minute all right we're back we got my cutting board out here now cutting board just basically has a 90 degree angle on it that I used to cut with uh, we're going to have to go the long ways here because I don't want to waste all this glass down here by only using just a few inches of it so what we're going to do here we're going to set this right in here up against the backstop here and this is one inch wide so we're going to take one of our one inch rulers here again we're just going to use all standard size rulers I'm going to set it in here here's my glass cutter here it's got a put a, I'm going to put it here in a little cup just dab it in with cutting oil in it you can either push or pull I'm going to start here at the top bring it down we're going to need six of these header glasses so I'm going to go ahead and cut three of these pieces which will make two each And when you do the cutting uh, you don't have to push super hard just try to make the cut uh, just nice and smooth though there's a second one here again I'm cutting on the smoother side of the two so you want to always do that if you can and we'll put this third one right here So there's our three sheets. We can get two of our headers out of here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our pattern here now. And remember, this is the pretty side. This is the one we're going to use up. So since we're going to put this on the back, we need to take our pattern and turn it over. So I'm going to set the pattern in here just like this. You see here how this made this a little bit longer than our actual pattern I don't really care we don't care if it grows a little bit the reason for that is your cutter here the wheel is in between these two uprights and so that adds moves it away from your ruler if you wanted to make this exactly one inch you couldn't use a standard ruler you would have to come up with uh, a couple other little ways to do it so that's why that does that So I'm just going to take and mark this like that. I'm going to come down here and mark it again. Kind of went off the page here. Get it up here. Okay, so now we've taken, we've marked it in these two areas here. So I'm going to take my ruler again. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to back it off about the thickness of our upright here and I can look at it with my wheel my cutting wheel and see that it's lined up where I want it I'm going to take and just score it after you do this for a while you can kind of pretty much get that judged right on there where size that goes 
Okay, so we'll get these all cut. Okay. Just take your running pliers in here, go right on the on the mark. So that's the start. This will be our two headers right here. See, that's going to look all right with that glass running sideways rather than up and down. I just didn't want to waste a whole lot of it. Uh, otherwise, here's what we have. Here's our scrap we have left over with. We would have ended up with a little tiny piece if we would have went across there. And we would have used up the whole piece. So this saved a little bit. So anyway, we'll set these aside real quick. And we're going to take our... This is our clear glass that we're going to make for making these right here. And what we're going to do with that is uh, we're going to take and I think we're going to run these up and down this way. Like this. So these measure three and five eighths inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to take here again just a standard ruler. This one right here, which is three inches. I'm going to use a combination. This is the aluminum angle again, three quarter across here, half inch here. So I'm going to set this in here like this. That gives us a half an inch. Now we're at three and a half. And we're going to add the leg of our cutter to it. So that should be just about where we want to be. Now this one here, you can just take and take and uh, snap it like that with your hand. We're going to need at least two pieces of this because we're going to need we're going to need six of the ones that uh, that go on the left side. We're going to need six of the ones that go on the right side. So we'll push this over and we'll cut this one too while we're doing it. So here again, we got a half an inch. We've got a three inch. Make sure that's up there. Score your, score your glass. Put your fingers on, on the right underneath the score line. And you can take and snap it. So now what we'll do is we'll come in here. And we'll get ready to cut these. Now here again, we're going to turn these over. Because we're cutting on the smooth side, not on the granite side. So we'll see how we do here. So... Let me get a glue stick real quick and we'll just stick that down. You could, if you wanted to, you could just take this like this, set it in here and just take your, uh, take your pin. See how this came out right here? This came out almost perfect to what we wanted. So you could, if you don't want to glue it down, you can do this right here. Just take this and set it in here. Whoop. Take and draw that just like that. Then we get ready to do this next one. We can just turn this around. It'll do the same thing. So here we go. Again, we're going to take our ruler. We're going to set it in here away from our line so we can get our cutter in there which i actually didn't accidentally dropped on the floor so i have to go get it all right i'm back i got got the cutter off the floor uh, fortunately i'm standing on a rubber mat for uh, to help my uh, feet out so uh, it doesn't hurt it to drop it so just happened to knock it off there so i'm going to get this back lined up where i want it Okay. Take and cut that. Take and snap it. And that's going to be our one first down piece. So we can take this one now. See how it's on a crook. See how it's crooked here now. So what we'll do, we'll put the crooked side.
Tori. You know what? We can't really do that because that'll make one of them go. That'll make one go the wrong way. So we won't do that. Uh, we can bring this one over here. This one here, just like that. Mark it. So this will basically give us a one one left-handed one, one right-handed one, which will be just fine. Line up your Get it up here in the camera here. Line up your ruler where you want it. Put your cutter on here. Make sure the wheel's right on the line. And we'll go ahead and snap that one. Gotta find the line here. So we got one here that's going to go over here, and we got one. So we got two, they came out all right, so that's good. Have to think about that sometimes. So we need to, we need to cut all together, we're going to need uh, 12 of these. We're going to need six left hand, six right hand. So we'll cut the rest of these out off camera. We don't need to watch you cut all of them. But when I come back, we're going to show you where these goes and how this goes together. So hang on. Right, we're back. We got the cutting board out of the way now. So uh, we're going to start to fit this together. So this is our, our header piece right here. So here it is right here. Uh, I want to show you what uh, this is. The pattern fits, but the glass is too big. And I'll show you why. As you set this in here, as you bring it down, because we've added this thickness of this cotter pin on, on this side right here, it won't let it come all the way down. So what we'll do is we'll take right here on our glass uh, grinder, and we're going to come in here. We're going to grind that off. And then where this leg's going back in here, we'll also come in here, and we'll grind that back so that it'll fit up straight otherwise it like i said it'll start off crooked and it gets crook it gets worse as you go down the down the project so we don't want to do that so uh, i'll go offline and grind this real quick we'll bring it back and show it to you okay so we're back here we go so here's the piece we've got right here so if you if you put a straight edge on here you can see what i've done right here okay this is cut back right there so that's going to allow for the leg of the cotter pan going across the top here to uh make this go straight so you take your piece of header glass bring it down here and push it in here straight just like that now right here we're going to run a piece of h came the h came here is the one that makes the letter h this one here happens to be rh9 i like that one because it has a high heart which means this opening in here is a little bit wider than the uh, than the rh8 so I like the nine a little bit better. So it's going to go in here like this. You can see, kind of need to cut it a little bit on an angle. So here again, just take your take your dikes, set it up here a little bit on an angle, and mark it. Bring it down here. You just take and mark it right here. Take your dikes here again on an angle. Flat side towards your good side here. Set it in here. You want it to fit nice and tight. You want these joints all to be nice and tight here. And now, before we go on, let's take and make sure this is straight. So you can see here, this is sticking up here just a little bit, which means this is a little bit too long. So you want to be sure you got it where you want it before you start building everything else. There we go. That looks better. Let's look at this piece of glass real close. Sometimes when you cut the glass, it gets a little lip on it. This has got just a tiny little lip on it here. And it's pushing the glass away just a little bit. So I'm going to take it on the grinder really lightly. Don't do this with your finger very hard. I'm going to make it really lightly. I don't know if you can see it right here. It makes a little hump right here. So when the 
H cam sitting in here is moving it up a little bit. So I'll go offline real quick. I'm just going to hit this really light to knock that sharp edge off. So I'll be back. All right, I'm back. I knocked that, I knocked that real sharp edge off of here. It was kind of sticking out right here. So uh, I also took and knocked off the sharp point right here. Sometimes when you come into your 45, the real sharp point will interfere with letting that go all the way back. So set this in here. Move it down. Tap it in. Take your H came now and stick it in here. And what we'll do is we'll just take a couple of pins. And we're going to take and we'll pin it just like this. Now the piece of the glass are going, to, going down the side. Here they are right here. So here's a couple. You want to line up, take a pair of them, line them up. Make sure that they fit nice and uh, tight as far as the same size, which these do. So we're going to take one of them here. That one there is going to go over here. This one here is going to go here. So they're going to sit in here like this. They're going to be pulled up right here. See how this is growing a little bit right here? But we don't really care because uh, this is one of the, my cut and stack projects. So if it grows out a little bit, we don't care. The reason that's growing is you've got the edge of the U came here. And then you also have the heart of the H came, which makes everything grow. Uh, so that's how that moves out just a little bit. This glass here also has a little bit of a lip on it. Some glass does that, not all of it. So I'm going to hit this with a grinder on both sides. I'll do both of these so it'll be smooth. So I'll be back in a second and we'll get that done. All right, back. So I touch these up just a little bit, kind of knock off any sharp edges here. So, okay, so we'll set this one in here like this. All the way into our U came and underneath our H came here. And we're going to take some old pieces of U came here. You start getting little pieces. I'm going to take this right here and I'm going to set it in here like this just to hold it like that. Also going to put one here in the end so that it doesn't try to back out on us. Just like this. Plus, I'm going to leave this stick out just a little bit right here. Let's get a bigger one than that. I'm going to leave this stick out here just a little bit because this is where the end of the project is going to end right there. So we, when we cut this H cane, we can cut it to fit in there just perfectly. Okay, this side here is going to go over here. Slide it in. Here again, we'll put this one on here, let it sit out just a little bit. Push it in. Then we can take our, here again, we'll go back to our H came. We're going to take and cut it, straight edge, straight edge. And we're going to set it up here and go right against that U came. And we're going to take and we're going to mark it right here. Just like that. Now just take a straight edge again, cut it, and we want it to fit tight. This one here is just a little bit too long, so you just want to take and trim it just a little bit. Try to hold your cutting dikes up straight so you don't get a you don't get one cut off on the edge. There you go. That's what you want. So anyway. Uh, we're going to need 12 of these. Okay, we're going to need two for each side. So I'll cut a whole bunch of lead here uh, when I go offline and to get ready to put these all together. Uh, so, but right for right now, we'll go ahead and we'll do this one here one more. We'll just go ahead and finish this one right here. Here again, take your straight edge, cut that, set these two together just like this. Okay, take and hold this right here. Trim it, tuck it in here, take your pin again and pin it. We can take this one out, pull that in there like that, and we'll pin it. Perfect. Okay, so that's what you guys are looking for. Okay. So I said we're going to need 12 of these. So we're going to need 10 now because I did this one. And I talked earlier about a cutter that I have. I bought 
about 25 years ago. I don't know if they make that or not, but I'll show it to you real quick. Here's what it looks like. It's got a cutting blade right under here, kind of like a guillotine. And it's got a backstop right here that you can adjust back and forth. So when I get ready to cut all these, I'll take one of these out of here, set it in here, and I'll take and I'll set my backstop to where I want it. And then I just push this down and it will cut it right where we want it. And uh, that will uh, make it much easier to go. I'll do the same thing with the u cane that goes around. And like I said, I don't know if this is still available anymore, but uh, I've had this one for like 25 years or so. Uh, it doesn't have a manufacturer's name on it. It uh, looks like maybe somebody maybe manufactured these in the garage and uh, maybe sold them. So uh, you might look around maybe on, uh, you can check you can check Amazon, maybe check uh, Delphi Glass, uh, maybe go on eBay, maybe you'll find somebody who's got one of these that might want to sell it. They're handy if you're making projects like this where it's a lot of repetitive pieces where you're going to make six of these panels. They're all exactly the same. So for your basic outline lead and so forth, it's a it's a handy little gadget to have. So it's not necessary to have it, but if you've got it, it makes life easier. Now in here, we're going to put all kinds of different glass in there as far as colors go. And this is a great opportunity. Uh, if you've been playing with this stuff for a while, you know that you um, you are going to accumulate bits and pieces of glass and so here's here's where we're going to get the glass for this project so i got this is a whole tub of all kinds of different kinds of glass so i'll take and dump this out on a table and we'll pick and choose the colors we want to use so this has been collected over probably maybe a three year period uh, it's from leftover from other projects, so we'll get uh, we'll get started and use that. So that'll be a good way to uh, use up some of our scrap glass. So when we come back, I'm going to show you how we're going to fill this in. We'll take and find some pieces that we like, and uh, we'll also have the rest of uh, rest of these cut. We'll have our headers cut, and I'll also have all the came cut for this project. So uh, we'll be back in a minute. All right, we're at the point in our project now where we're going to get ready to fill this all in. And we're going to just fill this in with all different types of a glass, with all different sizes. So anyway, as I said a little bit earlier, uh, we're going to use scrap glass. So uh, I'm going to take the camera down and I took and dumped that big box that I showed you out on some tables. And so we'll take a look at it real quick and uh, then we'll come back. We'll pick some glass and we'll go ahead and I'll show you how we're going to fill this in. So we'll be back in a second. All right, well, here's pile number one with all our glass. You can see some of it's got some already nice looking pieces in it. So uh, we'll figure out where we're going to go from there. And now we're going to move over to the big table where we got a whole bunch of stuff. Here's the rest of that barrel. So you can see we got all kinds of nice uh, glass to pick from. So uh, we should be able to get a nice uh, assortment of colors and so forth. Uh, I did notice there was quite a few of these uh, guys right down here down at the bottom here. Uh, all these little thin strips. So we'll scatter some of those in and out of the project. So uh, I'll pick out a, a, probably a dozen different uh, pieces of glass. And when we come back, we'll get ready to cut them up and put them in our project. All right, well, we're back. So I dug through a lot of that scrap and I dug out a few pieces here. I'll show you what we're going to do. So... These are some of the choices that I picked out of that, all of those uh, pieces of scrap glass. So this is a good time to use some of those scrap pieces. So this is the piece we're going to work with. So the next project we're going to do is we're going to fill this center section up right here. And we're going to do it at random. So uh, I've cut a couple little pieces here to uh, get started. So we'll show you how, it going, how it's going to go. So we'll just take and put this little purple one in here. It just pushes up here and then you're going to use a piece of H came. Take and stick it in here. Take and pin it so it doesn't get away from you. Come over here on this side here. We're going to do the same thing. Make sure you got the pretty side up. Make sure it's up in the channel on your on your H came. Set it in here. Same way here, make sure you got the right side glass. This is the one. 
I don't know, you probably, you probably can't see that, but this is real, real, real smooth here. This side here is ripple, so this is the back side of that glass. So uh, it's kind of a, just a minor thing, but it, it does make a difference uh, uh, when you're putting this together. So this one here is going to go in between these, in the channels on these two pieces of H came. Just take and start to slide it down. Push it in here. Should snap in tight. You want, you want these to be as tight as they can be without uh, pinching the glass. So that's how that's going to work. So now we'll take and we'll cut a couple of pieces of H came to go across. Get another piece of it here if I can find one. Here it is. Took and covered it up. We'll take and take our H came here. Just go in between these two right here. Take and mark it. And we're going to take the flat side of our cutters, go right up against our line, set it in here on an angle like that. And you see that I made that just a little bit too long, so we'll trim it back. There we go. Actually, actually a little, now I cut it too short. Let's see if it fit, see if it fits in this other side here. Yeah, that's a better fit right there. So we'll put it in that side just instead. So we'll take our cutters, cut here again, flat side to get a straight cut. Stick it in here. Bring the cutters up. Okay, this side needs to be trimmed a little bit, but I won't do as much as I did last time. Just a little bit more. Set it in here. There we go. You can put your pin in here. Make sure you're, make sure you're in the channel, and make sure your lead's going straight up and down. Uh, don't get it off to the side because it'll create a problem for you. Okay, so from now here, we're going to build out, and we're going to build out back here to match the length of these two here. So we'll put some other glass in here. Uh, like I said before, we've got a lot of these little tiny stringer ones. We'll stick one of these pieces in here. We'll do all kinds of things with this. Uh, so a whole bunch of different colors. And uh, so anyway, here's another. Uh, turquoise one will run something along here so this will go really quick if you notice here i've got all my header glass cut i've got all our side glass cut here's both left and right hand side we'll kind of get those up out of our way over here i've got all of our lead cut here's our this is our ru70 u came so this is across the header i got here i got the down pieces here they're right here and then these pieces right here, this is our RH9 uh, H-came. Those are the ones that are going here. So these are all cut now. Got our other two cotter pins here that we'll put in the other three. We'll make three just like this one. This one will have uh, the, the cotter pin for our hanger. And also across the back here, we're going to put a, a little piece of H-came on an angle. I'll show you how we're going to do that. That'll be the cleat to hold our solar light in so when it sits in the top. So... Uh, We'll be back in a minute. I'll get this all filled out here to the edge here, and then we'll come back. I'll show you how we're going to put the back on here. We're going to run a dummy strip right down here, which will basically be just the crown of our of our H came to fill that up a little bit. That'll give us some more strength right here in the corner where our hanger is at. So I'll show you how we're going to do that real quick too. So we'll be back in a second. I'll get that filled up, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, well, we're back. We got it all filled in now with some colored glass. So now we're ready to put our uh, U came across the bottom here. Uh, here again, I took the little T square here, lined it up here, and I can come up here to check and make sure this is straight, which it is. So now I've taken our U came here, and I cut just a little bit of an angle on both ends so it'll fit in here. So it's going to go in here like this. 
just like that. And then I've got another little piece of form wood right here. I'm going to set that right there. I'm going to take my hammer and not real, not hard, but just a little bit. Give it just a little bit of a tap. Push everything down. Make sure it's all where it's supposed to be. Take and put a couple pins in it right here. Take and check it one more time for straightness. That looks like that'll work right there. So now we're going to get ready to uh, solder this. And but across here, I said we said we're going to we're going to put a little piece of uh, the crown. So I'm going to take a piece of our H cam here, and I'm going to take set it in here. I'm going to mark it like that. Then I'm going to take and cut it right here. Here again, straight edge to get a straight edge. And then I'm going to come inside it here and I'm going to cut the heart out of it here. All I want is the crown part of it. Just like that. Straighten that up a little bit. I'm going to set this on an angle right here. That one's a little, that's a little bit too long right there. Well, maybe let's see, let's see if it'll go in there. Nope, it's a little bit too long. So just cut this off just really very, very slightly each time. I want to get it to slide in here. Just like that. I like to break this up. I just don't like these real big pieces without any kind of, any kind of a, a spacer in it or, or a came line. And uh, so I like the way that looks. Uh, also, like I said before, the cotter pin leg is running back underneath here. It helps tie this all together. So now we're going to get ready to solder it. So I've got my soldering iron plugged in, so it's already heated up. So I'm going to bring it over. And we talked about soldering irons before. I'm using a Waller 100 watt with a 700 degree tip in it uh, using a 60 40 solder and i'm using a gel flux uh, soldering flux for the uh, to help the the solder flow and we're going to take this right here and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little stainless steel brush that i have right here just guy right here and we're going to knock off any oxidation see how shiny that gets when you when you do that, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. So I'm going to go over all the joints here. This just helps the solder flow a little bit better. Uh, some people say you have to do this. Some people say you don't. So yeah, I, I like to go on the basis. I just find what works for me and then we'll go with that. So let's put this back in here. Get that lined up where we want it. That looks good. So now just take your flux, go over all your joints. Your soldering now is one of those things, uh, practice, practice, practice. You just uh, have to do a, a lot of practice on it to uh, get an idea of what uh, what works for you and what uh, what the best way for you to solder. Uh, there's a thousand different techniques that people use to solder. And uh, so you have to find one that works best for you. Uh, I usually take an old piece of cane like this one here. And on my soldering tip, I usually run the tip. I usually run the tip over it just a little bit to make sure that it's not too hot. If you leave that on there too long, it'll melt the uh, melt the lead. So we don't want to do that. Then what I do, I usually just take a link of solder off of my roll. I'm using 6040 here. I like to tin my iron just a little bit. Just like that. And I like to keep the soldering iron flat. And I'm going to take off just about a sixteenth of an inch off the front of this. Just like that. Just come right along, solder these in. All right. 
Make sure this is pushed down all the way here. Let me get something to push that down with. There we go. Get these all soldered. So we're going to solder both sides of this, but uh, when we turn it over, we're not going to solder anything down this outside edge, and I'll show you why when we get ready to put this together. If you do that, what will happen, well, you'll create a bubble in the, in the edge of it, and when the sides go together, they'll create an air gap, and it just doesn't go together very well. If you have one that kind of sucks down like that, just go back and just, just add just a little bit more to it. Come over here and we'll finish this off right here. Try to make your little soldering beads all about the same size if you can. Uh, it just makes the job look a little bit nicer. All right, that looks good. So now what we're going to do is take a little paper towel. I'm going to wipe off any excess solder here. And we'll take and pull this out. We're going to take it apart. Here's our little guy right here. So this ought to work out nice. So this is going to be sitting on a little bit of an angle when they all go together to make our kind of like a little uh, lampshade. So we're just going to turn this over here again. We're not going to solder down any of these sides here. So we're going to start right here. Solder that up. Here again, I'm going to flex it. If you don't flux it, when you go to solder it, you'll notice the solder doesn't flow. It just kind of gobs up. So you want to be able to be sure to remember to flux it. Here we go. And you just move right along here. Okay. I'll go offline and finish the rest of this because you don't need to watch watch that all being done. And when we come back, we'll show you what we're going to do with these ends and how we're going to finish the product up. All right, we're back. So I got it all cleaned up now. Uh, we'll do the final clean after we do something with these ends. So what we're going to do with these ends, we've done this on the other ones, about a quarter inch up from the edge here. Cut that. Come in here, cut this back. Just take and cut this in here like this. Cut this to a point and then take this point on the edge of your work table and bend it in so it closes up that area. If you have one that's kind of sticking out like that right here, just take your little piece of form wood and push that back so it's even with that. We're going to do the same thing here. This one's a little bit short, so we won't trim it back. We'll just go ahead and snip it here. All right. Here again, we'll bend that back. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my uh, drill vise, bring it over here, we'll put it in the picture here, right here. And I'm just going to set this in here like this. And I'm going to tighten this up really just gently. I don't want to get it too high, tight and break my glass. And I'm going to take and flux this. And I'm going to take the siren iron and I'm going to take and just fill this in right here. Just a little bit more. Just like that. Now if you want to, you could just leave that like that. Uh, they don't look bad, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go offline, put this on some six or uh, 80... 80 uh, grit sandpaper and sand this off so it's smooth and I'll take and round these corners just a little bit Where are our hangers at now here? I'm going to set this in here like this I'm going to tighten it up here 
put a little flux around down in the gap here around it. Now I'm just going to take my iron. I'm going to tin it right here, like that, and I'm just going to hold it right on the solder on the cotter pin, and just let it fall away, and it'll solve, fill up that hole right there. So that cotter pin is not going to be coming out of there anytime soon. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just take and put it, tin your iron, put the solder right up against the cotter pin, and you can see it when it drops away. It just drops down into the into the gap there. So that'll take care of that. Now over here in this edge here, we've got one that's got a little tiny opening. We're going to fill that in also. Pull that up. Just take and close this down. Just like that. Okay, so I'll go off and get on the 80 grit sandpaper, clean this all up here, and I'll come back. We'll show you the final deal. Then we'll show you how we're going to put the cleat on it, and our first panel will be completely done. All right, so we're back. We got it all cleaned up now. So we put this on the 80 grit sandpaper. Got that all cleaned up on all the corners here. Got everything rounded down. Got this looking nice for us. So now we're going to put our cleat on it. That'll be the thing that holds the solar panel in the top here. And I'm just going to lay this right here. I'll try to get it where you can see what we're doing. We're going to put the cleat right across here. I have a pair of medical clamps that you can, uh, these, these hold onto the H cam that we're going to use. And it's going to set it in here just like that on, on its edge. First of all, we'll take, we'll put some flux in here. Put it here. I'm going to take our soldering iron. We'll take and tin it. And then we're going to set this in here just like this. And we're going to come right in the side here on the corner in between the two and just let it flow off. Now we can take this off and we can take and we'll just take in here again. Tin our iron. Set it in here. Now you can spot solder this. Or in my case, I for some reason like to solder it all the way across. Uh, spot solder and it would be more than enough to hold it. I just think it kind of finishes it off even though nobody will ever see it because it's underneath the solar light. All right. Now, so that that's what it looks like right here. Right here is where it's soldered together. Now these corners are kind of sharp, so I usually take my dikes flat side in and just kind of cut the corners just a little bit like that to give them a little area. So this one's all done. So we're going to make two more exactly like this one with cleats and a hanger on it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back and uh, we'll make three of these that don't have a hanger and they don't have a cleat on them. And then when I get those all made, uh, we'll come back and show you how they are. And then we'll show you how we're going to put them in a little jig and we're going to make it into a hexagon. So we'll be back in, uh, in just a little while and get those all done. All right, we're back. Well, we got all six panels done now. So the ones on the top have the uh, hanger on them, and they also have the uh, cleat on the back here. So that'll hold our solar light in. So we got those all done. The uh, other three on the bottom here have no have no uh, cleat or hanger on them. So uh, I just got to match up here in sets. Uh, they can go anywhere they want to. We'll just move them up here like this, and. Uh, if you watch any of my other videos, you notice I have some jigs that I've made to put these on. These are going to go on a on a 30 degree angle to make them line up, and we're going to we're going to line them up so that the edges of the right this edge right along here and this edge right along here just come together or kiss to make a a good solid uh, joint. So I'll bring the uh, I'll bring the jig in now. 
it's going to, the jig's probably going to be a little confusing looking because it was made for much longer, much longer panels. And uh, so I've just added some strips to it just to cover it up. So I'll show it to you here. This is it right here. Here's the, here's the real part of it right here. These are 30 degree angles. They have stops on them. So we'll line up the, all of the panels up against the stop. So they'll all be the same size. And normally these strips on here wouldn't be on here, but because these, here's the two support legs way out here. As you can see, these are way too short to get all the way to the end. So this, the way this works is you just set this in here like this. We'll get it where everybody can see it. All right. So we're going to set this in. I remember we want to set it with the, with the uh, backside up. And remember, we didn't solder any of these along here. The reason for that is we don't want anything interfering with this edge right here. So this one here is going to sit in here. We're going to take and pull it up until it touches our backstop. This one's going to sit in here like this. And then we're going to take and we're going to pull them both up until they just kiss to make a nice V here. Make sure it's up against the backstop on both sides. This is what you're looking for right there. That way you don't have any light or you don't have any like this. You don't want to do that. You don't you won't have any solder go through the crack and create a kind of a, a mess on the other side, which we don't want to have happen. Plus, this will seal it off so you won't have any light come through with it. So make sure they're lined up as good as you can get them here. This will determine how nice your job comes out. So I usually take quite a bit of time getting these lined up. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to spot saw them right here at the top and bottom. The reason for that is if we don't like the way they look, it'll be easier to get them apart than if we solder the whole thing and then we decide we don't like the way that looked. So I think that looks pretty good right there. So I'm just going to take and we're going to take and we're going to flux just the top and the bottom here. I'm going to take our iron again. And we're just going to take here and we're going to take and we're going to tin it. Maybe. There we go. Going to tin it. And I'm just going to set it right here. I'm going to, set, I'm going to solder those two panels together right there. I'm going to go down here and going to do the same thing. Just like that. Now, I've made some little clips here. These clips are just made out of standard paper clips that you buy at the stationery store or any any store. Normally, these little fingers here are rolled over like these. I just took a pair of pliers and rolled them back over. And if you can see here, I've made some little fingers now. And those fingers, what we're going to do with that, we're going to take and move this, move this now. So here's what we want. We want it to look clean like this, where it doesn't have... It doesn't have any solder on it. But to guarantee that, what we're going to do, we're going to take these little clips right here and we're going to set them in here in the inside between the glass and the came. See if you can see that right here. And they're going to pull that together super tight. Just like that. Probably only going to need three of them here. Just like that. You can take and push these down if you want to to get them out of the way. Whoops. You can see that they snap pretty quick. So they're going to be sure you got them underneath the came there. There we go. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn this over again. I'm just going to set it in here just at, you know, at free will here. And I'm going to solder the, uh, the rest of this together. And I'm going to use about four spot solders down there. It doesn't have to be soldered super tight, but we want to keep it together. So we're going to just take here and we'll take and we'll put a, a couple of nice solder beads right here. One here. One there. I'll come back down here and I'll fill in this bottom right here just a little bit where we started. And up at the top here, if you watch my other videos too, you notice I always fill this in solid. You don't have to do that, but I'm going to. 
I like the way it looks, kind of take and fill this in just solid. There you go. Just like that. And then we're going to take and we're going to turn it over. We'll take our clips off. And these will be our first two panels for our solar light that we're going to make right here, which is going to be a kind of like a little baby lampshade. So this is what we want. We want it to be nice and clean down here. We don't want a bunch of solder coming running through there. So that's the start of it. So we got two of these together. We'll put the we'll put all the rest of them together. Then we'll come back. We'll set this in here like this. And we'll put the next set of two here. And then we'll put the last set on top. So I'll show you how we do that when we come back. So I'll go offline and uh, solder the rest of these up. And uh, so you can see how this is going to sit. This is going to sit like this. So that's going to make a kind of a nice little lampshade. And uh, so it should, uh, should come out pretty nice. So I'll go offline real quick, get those other two soldered up, and then we'll come back and we'll put them together as a set of four. And then we'll finally put them together as a set of six. So if you, don't have, if you don't have a jig like this or you don't want to make one like this, even if you just set a couple of little blocks on a 30 degree angle and just bring your edges down, you could uh, do that. These panels are so small, you almost could just freehand them. Just take and hold them in here like this and take and freehand them. Uh, you might even be able to take their clips and uh, marry it together. I don't know if that'll work. I've never tried it, but uh, you might be able to just take these, put these panels together. Let's see if we can do that. Might be a little bit tricky. Well, Maybe not. Looks like he's going to pull it straight. So it's going to be better off to make some kind of a little wedge so you can hold it here. So you could just bring them together like this and then wedge up underneath here with a, a couple little boxes or something to get your 30 degrees. And if you remember that 30, 30 degrees was made with that little blue triangle. So if you've got a 60, uh, 60 30 triangle, it's easy to make that. So we'll be back in a second after we get these together and then we'll put them next two together. All right, I want to come back on here really quick here. This second set I put together, I want to, I don't know if you can see this or not, but when these two come together here, if you look in here really close, let me see if I can get it up here. If you look in here really close, you can see there's a little gap right here. And if you were to solder that, the solder will come through that gap. So when you put the clamp, uh, little clamps, clamps on there, That'll close that up and we won't have a problem. In fact, I can close it up with my finger. So I just wanted to show you that why, why we're closing that up with the clamps. Because otherwise uh, you'll get a, what they call a lead bleed where the lead comes through or the uh, solder comes through here. So uh, we, don't, we don't really want that. If it happens, you can take and kind of clean it up or file it up. It uh, it's not, doesn't look as nice, but uh, it'll certainly do the job. All right, now we'll go back to work. All right, so we got... All the panels put together and set the two. So now we're going to put this, this two pair together to make a set of four. So here again, we're just going to tack solder these ends. There are the corners here. Make sure it's lined up as nice as you can get it. That looks pretty good right there. So I'm just going to come in here and just put a little right there. like that now this one here before before I do the rest of them uh, I'm going to turn it over and we're going to take and put our clips on it to be sure we get it nice and straight so as you can see right now it has no solder coming through it so what we'll do now we'll put the clips on this one and we'll come back and solder it nice and shut this last one we're going to put in it gets a little bit tricky because it's hard to see what we're doing with it in fact, I'll probably get my wife to come out and give us a hand on that one. And uh, we'll take and uh, uh, move the camera down where we can look through the middle of it and take a look at that one. 
Uh, we've done that on some of the other solar solar uh, light uh, or solar solar panels that we've made before on some of the solar light lanterns. So uh, we'll probably do that with this one too, so we'll get an idea. So we're going to come in here and spot solder this a couple again. All right, come back here and fill this in. Like I said before, that's not necessary, but I do like to do that because this area here is actually the only open area of the bunch. So that's how that's going to go together. So we'll take this and push that out of the way. We'll take and turn this over and we'll take our clips off here. All right, so far so good as far as getting any solder bleed. So that's good. It's a little teeny bit right here, but uh, we'll call that okay. All right. Now, here's the tricky part. Get our thing back in here. Going to get this lined up here. We'll put this guy in here. Better get it in the right side, otherwise you'll have you end up with two hangers right next to each other, which we don't want to do that. Okay, so this is where the trick comes right here, is to get this together. I'm going to just lift this one up and put it on top. All right, so I'm going to go get my wife real quick. She'll come out and take and film this because it's a little hard to see what we've done here. So uh, we'll be back in a second and I'll get her to uh, come out and we'll uh, shoot this. All right, well, I got my best helper in the world out here to give me a hand. She's going to shoot this for us. So this is the area that we're going to solder right here, down here. So here again, we're just going to tack that with a little bit of flux in both up in the front and back. We're going to reach inside, we're going to tin our iron, and we're just going to put it down here. Get us a little solder joint here. I didn't get enough tin on it. There we go. There we go. And then I'm going to reach in through here. You know what? I Yeah, this is fine. I'll reach in here in the back, and I'm just going to tack this. All right. Now, rather than go down and solder the rest of those, what we're going to do, we're going to rotate this one more time, and we're going to line up these last two that need to get soldered so that we need to make any adjustments, uh, we'll be able to do that. Otherwise, if you get it all soldered together and uh, you need to make an adjustment, then you're going to have a problem with it. There we go. Get this lined up right there. Okay, it takes a little bit of playing with here to get it lined up where you want it. Okay, make sure it's up against your stops here. Here's the area we're looking at right here. Let me look in the back here and see what it looks like back here. Looks good back there. Looks good right there. So I think that'll do it for us. Let me take and flux that up a little bit. in the back here needs to be adjusted just a little bit there we go just a little bit okay we look good here okay so I'm going to reach in here and uh, take and solder this shut right here just a little bit come down to the end and take and solder it shut just like that So now, here's our little lampshade. What I'll do now is I'll go back now. If you look right here, you can see there's a gap right in here. So uh, 
what I'm going to do is I'll take in this little joint that's right here. I'll use what they call a razor saw. I'll come in here and I'll saw that apart and draw these together because I don't want that gap in there. Uh, everybody else looks good. This is the this is the last joint we made right here. So uh, sometimes that was the hardest one to make. That's why I didn't want to solder all this up in case it has a gap in it. So the razor saw, I'll show you what it looks like if you've never seen one before. It's just a real, real thin blade. Sometimes uh, things, things happen like this, and so then you have to kind of take it apart and work on it. So this is what a razor blade looks, or razor saw looks like. And I'll just come in here real quick, and I'll saw through this. Well, we can do it right here while we've got it on the camera. I'll just saw right through here. And we'll get this, we'll get this sawed apart. Like that and then I can take and I'll fix I'll take this edge right here and clean it up a little bit so that I can get these to come together so so we don't have right here you can see it here we want to get rid of that gap there so uh, I'll just take and smooth this off and bring it back so I'll go offline real quick and I'll file that down real quick and then we'll come back I'll show show you what we did to it okay so that that's how we're gonna do that all right we're back I got that area cleaned up here that we had trouble with so uh, if you have an issue like that kind of try to fix it then don't go ahead and solder it up and then later on wish you would have you would have fixed it so you can see as we look all the way around here now we've got uh, no bleed through on any of these so I'm going to go offline and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut a, a little insert to go in here to hold our solar light the insert will rest on our little cleats that we put in here and uh, we'll put a chain on it and we'll hang it up and uh, take a couple of pictures of it and uh, the project will be done. So I hope everybody's been following along. I think it came out really nice. It's kind of a miniature lampshade. And uh, we're going to put our uh, hummingbird uh, solar light inside of it. So I think it'll come out very nice. So we'll be back. We'll get this all washed up. And uh, then we'll put it, put it uh, outside and light it up. All right, well, we're back. So I got it all cleaned up now. So I... Uh, it came out really, really nice. So, real happy with that. So, we got a couple more steps to do before we uh, before we take it out and hang it up. One is we're going to put an insert inside here, and it's going to look like this. This is just a pattern, and the insert is going to be made of uh, the same sheet metal that we've been using before. This is it, the small galvanized sheet. Uh, I'll use this as a pattern to make this, and. Uh, we're going to, this is going to serve twofold. One, it will hold our solar light in. And two, I'm going to come underneath our little cleats right here. And I'm going to solder it to the back of this. So it'll hold this and make this very stable. Because this can wiggle a little bit if you, especially if in the wind and hanging for a while. So that'll tie it all together so it doesn't, it doesn't shift on us. So this guy right here, he's, a, he's just going to sit in here. I can put him in from underneath is the easiest way to do it. Bring it in from underneath. Just take and set it in here. He sits right there like that. And now our solar our solar light panel was, will sit on top of this and go in here like this. Uh, we're also going to put a chain on it. So we're going to use the same 16-gauge uh, uh, jack chain we've been using on all of our projects. It's got a number 10 split ring right here. It's got a number six ball bearing swivel on it, and it's got a three quarter inch uh, split ring on the outside. And so I just take this and pull it out here. Just take your uh, open end right here, and you just take and you insert it into the into your cotter pin hanger, and then just take your pliers and just pull it shut. So I'll go ahead and do the rest of those offline. When we come back, we'll show you the final product where we make the, uh, the little tin insert here. And uh, we'll solder it down to the uh, cleats. And uh, the whole project will be done. So we'll be back in a minute. All right, we're back real quick. We got our uh, insert all cut out now. This is the one on the, uh, the, the thin sheet, sheet metal. So uh, I've got a little mark right here, and I marked it right here. So I know that that's how I want to put it in here. Because if there's a little bit of variance in size... Uh, you'll have trouble getting it in there. Now you can see that 
since it's sitting on top here, it's not going to go in through the top, so we have to put it in from inside. Um, you can take your, if you need to, you can take your cleats right here. They're soft, so you can take and bend them down a little bit if you need to, if you need a little more room. So we'll just bend those down just a little bit right now before we get started. That way we won't have uh, any trouble getting it in here. Then after we get it in, we'll, we'll just bend them up flat. So we're going to insert this in here like this. We're going to go up on top of our cleat. Up here. Okay, we're on top of this one. So now we're at this one here, and this is the one. This is the one that's going to be the hard one to get it into. You can bend this just a little bit to get it to go around, like that. And then I can just take and I reach back in here, and I'll bend these back up so it'll be up tight. Because now we're going to solder this to these cleats from the back side. I'll show you how we're going to do that real quick. Now, I'm going to be real honest with you here. This came out a little bit bigger than I really wanted it to. I hadn't planned on having to put an insert in here. Uh, because what happened was, if you remember when we drew the original drawing, we allowed an eighth of an inch on each side of a five-inch circle. And I got that five-inch circle. I just should have measured the solar light. Instead, I just took it off the literature that came with it. And it comes to come to find out that that solar lantern, the solar part of it is really only four and seven eighths of an inch. So by adding an eighth of an inch to the outside edge, plus the fact that it's not five inches, it's only four and seven eighths, we end up with about a quarter inch too, too big. So these, these should have been probably maybe instead of three, two and three quarter, which would have sucked this in a little bit smaller and the solar light would have fit right on the cleats themselves. But that didn't happen, so we got a cure for it here. So now to solder this, we're going to take a, just a little plastic cup I have right here. And I'm going to set that in here like this. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to turn it upside down on that cup. And right here, you can see, here's our cleats right here. This one here needs to be brought down just a little bit. Get our chain out of the way there. I should probably not put that on right away. So we'll put that on there. Kind of center this around. Make sure you got it where you want it. Come in here with a little bit of flux on each of these. Right there. Right here and right here. Take your solder now. Here again, we're just going to take and we're taking tin or iron right here. I'll set it right in here. Just like that. Pull it back and forth there just a little bit. And we'll take and rotate this a little bit so you can see what we're doing right here. Get it over here. Take and tin this again here. There we go. So now we got that in there. That will not only support the, the shape of this, but will also strengthen it so we won't have it getting uh, out of whack. So now, let me just get a little paper towel here. We'll wipe that off. And I'll show you one more thing that we did. Just wipe this down. So now we'll turn around. So now we've got our circle here. We can touch this up a little bit. We'll do ahead and do that. One other thing I did on our uh, solar light now, 
because we've got all our stained glass in the sides here, in the sides, I kind of wanted to illuminate those a little bit, especially at night. Daytime, they'll show up fine, but at night, I wanted to kind of illuminate them a little bit. So I took the top hummingbird, and I sacrificed that by taking, and here's what I did with it. Here's our hummingbirds here. I took it. This is the top of it right here. You take these screws out of here to change the battery. But I also took these screws out of here and I drilled two small holes right here. And I took a piece of 18 gauge copper wire and I bent this one around to hold it up against the top here. So instead of it hanging down, it's going to illuminate our leaded glass here. So that'll help light that up a little bit. So, uh, so now instead of having, uh, let's see, we would have had one, two, three, four, five, six of them hanging down. We're going to only have five. But I wanted to do that because I didn't want the, uh, I didn't want at nighttime for this just to be all dark. So anyway, we'll put this in, and the way way, way it goes in, just basically you're going to feed it all the way through. But I want to touch this paint job up here just a little bit, and uh, then we'll uh, we'll go outside and. Uh, We'll light it up a little bit in, uh, at night. Uh, when it turns dark, we'll go ahead and come to back and take another few shots of it. And the video will be all done. So I hope everybody's been following along. I hope they enjoyed this one. Uh, this is one of the few times when this is the, this is the first one of these I've ever made. Uh, normally, a lot of our videos, I will take and make a prototype or make one of what we're going to do before I make the one on the video. This one here, I thought, you know what, we'll give this a try. So you can see we had a few little setbacks on a couple of the areas where we cut a glass. We had one of the little soldering error here, that type of thing. So uh, I just wanted to start. This is so this one's never. This is a this is the first one made like this, and so we learned this is too long. So we remember the next one. We'll cut this back a quarter of an inch to to uh, two and three quarter. And uh, so anyway, we just learned a lot. And when we come back and make the next one, we will take all of those things that we learned on this one and incorporate in the other one. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll uh, check out. All right, I want to come back here real quick here and show you this is a, with it all complete now where we've got our, our little spacer plate down here and now we've got our solar light on top of it. So anyway, that came out really nice for us. So uh, now we're going to take it outside and uh, uh, it's going to be daylight right now, but we're going to take some pictures of it. And then what we're going to do is uh, in the evening, we'll uh, take and uh, light it up. I'm actually going to light it up a little bit to uh, show you. All I got to do is put a little piece of paper over the over the light here and uh, over the uh, solar panel here to make it come on. So I'm going to do that so you can see uh, how it looks in the daylight. So we'll be back in a minute. All right. Well, we've got the project out of the patio now. So it came out very nice, so I'm real happy with it. I hope you guys have followed along. And uh, when it gets a little darker, we'll shoot another short video and we'll be done with the project. All right, we're back out. It finally got dark enough where we could shoot one in the dark. So uh, I'm real happy with the outcome of it. This is on a mechanical spinner right now, so that's why it's going around and around. It uh, doesn't have to be on a spinner, but uh, I always put one on here for our show. Anyway, I hope everybody enjoyed the project. I hope you'll uh, subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you guys on the next video.